reporting for Katie Chats here at the TIFF Bell Lightbox in downtown Toronto with Steve Gravestock, the Associate Director of Canadian Programming here at TIFF. What inspired your interest in Canadian film? Um, well, actually, it was a Canadian studies course I took in the, when I was going to high school, like a long time ago. Uh, uh, and we, we started looking at... Uh, uh, part, part of the course was they were comparing Canadian and American movies, and we, we screened Midnight Cowboy and Going Down the Road, uh, because they were sort of similar stories. And I, go, I thought Going Down the Road was incredibly impressive, and in fact, better than Midnight Cowboy, so that kind of sparked my interest. So, What sets Canadian film apart from other countries in the world and the film they're making? I think... Um, uh, for me, I think that uh, it's definitely like an auteurist cinema. It's a director-based cinema, an artist-based cinema, uh, primarily. Um, I think that's uh, a lot of that has to do with the histor how, how the industry developed historically. Um, um, it has. I, I think there's a difference. There's obviously a difference between English Canadian cinema and Quebecois cinema, which has a different kind of commercial basis um, and has a, a different market since uh, because of the language. Um, but even then, I'd still say that the you know the key achievements in in Quebecois cinema are often sort of director driven. For example, Jean Marc Vallée is a very sort of personal filmmaker in a, in a lot of ways. I mean, Crazy is a very personal film. Um, I think uh, Café de Flore, the last one, are also kind of uh, also a very personal movie. Uh, so, and Xavier Dolan, who's had who's been very successful, and Denis Arcand, who's won Oscars. I mean, and. Denny Villeneuve has been Oscar nominated, Philippe Falardeau, those are all guys who sort of generate their own projects and uh, are very, uh, uh, you know, th they, it's, it's what they're interested in talking about. Um, I think that there's recently there's been a, um, uh, in the last three or four years, there's been a real global emphasis to Canadian cinema as well, um, which I think goes back quite a ways. I mean, it goes back to the you know, the 1950s and 1960s and uh, the films that were coming out of the National Film Board of Canada by people like Dono and about, um, about uh, uh, you know, aid to African countries. Uh, there, there was a number of sort of internationally themed uh, short documentaries and, and feature-length ones too. So I think that it's, it's a long-standing interest, but I, it seems to have come to the fore in the last couple of years with uh, feature films. Obviously, this year on the top ten, uh, uh, there's a number of examples. Rebel, Kim Nguyen's film, which deals with uh, child soldiers, uh, features a great performance by a young actress uh, in the lead role. Uh, Midnight's Children, Deepa Mehta's film, which is an adaptation of Salman Rushdie's Booker Prize winning novel. Uh, the World Before Her, Nisha Pahuja's documentary about uh, the status of women in contemporary and, uh, India, sort of contrasts um, uh, uh, beauty pageant contestants with uh, women who are in a kind of very militant um, religious fundamentalist camp. So there's a, a, a real like international flavor to things. But I mean, the good thing too is that it's sort of, even Goon, which is about hockey, we can't get any more Canadian than that. It actually starts in Boston because it was based on a, um, it was based on a book by a, a, an American hockey player who was kind of an enforcer. So, so I think that there's, uh, but even then I still think that we're, we're telling, uh, what, what's great about the, the list, uh, uh, this year's or the 2012 uh, Canada's top 10 list, especially with the features, is that it is a, um, you know, there's also some very specific local stories. I don't know if we've had a film from New Brunswick on the list before, and Mike McGowan's film Still, which stars uh, James Cromwell and, you know, one of Canada's greatest actors, uh, actors uh, Jean-Pierre Bougeot, uh, is, you know, very specifically rooted. It's based on a true story that actually happened in New Brunswick, so it's, it's pretty, you know, it's a very specific Canadian story. Do you find it challenging to represent all parts of Canada when you're doing programming because it is such a large country? That's a good question because it is actually, we try to be, uh, one of the things we try to do when we uh, program for the festival is to, to be representative uh, and uh, make sure that we have, um, you know, quality being, you know, the same. Uh, we, we try to make sure that we have, uh, you know, we represent as many regions as we can. Uh, we can't always do that. We can't, al we don't always have, um, uh, you know, in the end, it's all, it's about quality. That, that's sort of the final, like, uh, sort of the line in the sand kind of thing. Uh, but if, if you have a, a film, several films that are sort of equal, uh, um, you know, you'll probably go for the one that's a little rarer, um, which I think would apply to international programming as well. Um, 
uh, something from a, a region that's you know more new, new, unique. Um, I, I mean, the top ten is different because that's uh, that's voted on by a separate panel, uh, an independent panel. But the uh, both the shorts and the features. And how do you choose the panel for the top ten? Uh, well, that we try to be as representative as possible. We try to get people from across the country. This uh, jury, the panel this year uh, for for the features was a little more Toronto centric, but we had. Uh, Elizabeth Yake from British Columbia, who's a, a veteran producer, um, and uh, Jacob Tierney from Montreal, who's a filmmaker and actor. Uh, and we also had, uh, on the shorts panel, we had Matt and Hayes from Montreal. And you have been published in a variety of magazines and newspapers, and you've interviewed over 100 filmmakers yourself. What have you learned from interviewing all these different filmmakers, and are there any common threads amongst them? Um, yeah, actually, uh, there is. It's funny because often when when you, I've been programming Canadian cinema at the festival for almost ten years, and um, one of the things that people always ask is, uh, you know, they they talk about the fact that uh, Canadian English Canadian films in particular don't exactly perform incredibly well at the box office necessarily. I mean, it depends on the film. I mean, Goon did quite well. Um, uh, but it's, it's funny, because that is a, doing international programming, talking to other filmmakers, it's clear that uh, that's not a situation that's unique to Canada. Uh, I mean, there are a number of countries that do very well, like Denmark and France. Uh, some of that has to, do, has to do with the nationalism of the country. Uh, you know, that kind of investment in, you know, specifically Danish or French film. Some of it has to do with quota laws. Uh, so, you know, there's a variety of other, you know, factors that feed into it. Uh, but in a sense, I, I would say that um, because the uh, studios and sort of bigger budget pro uh, product, both American and French and et cetera, often dominates the screen space, uh, it's competitive no matter what. Even, I mean, you know, um, uh, American independent cinema, for example, is not like exactly dominating its own, like its domestic box office. So uh, it's often, uh, you know, one of the things that I, you also glean from talking to filmmakers is that it's not, it's never easy to make a movie. Uh, you never know whether it's going to work. You know, you think, you know, because you're doing what's been done in the past, et cetera. But uh, um, I think that, especially when you do on set visits and things like that, you really have to like respect the process and the filmmaker's uh, effort because uh, it's there's no guarantees. And what is the importance of the top 10 and getting Canadian cinema out there in order to preserve Canadian culture or whatever Canadian culture is really? Well I think that um, you know it's this uh, I think it's absolutely it's absolutely essential to have uh, a recognizable Canadian cinema and it's an ongoing thing I mean really we didn't really start making feature films in English Canada um, till the 1960s, which is very late. Uh, there's very few countries, I mean, Iceland, I think, is one of the few uh, that I can think of where fil feature filmmaking, a narrative feature filmmaking, which is kind of the backbone of, pro of production. Um, uh, it's very rare that a country would start that late. Um, so, you know, we were kind of behind the eight ball in some ways, like historically. Uh, plus, we were also in competition with. Uh, um, you, you know, the, it's not like Quebec or other countries where the, there's a language barrier and people want to hear things in their in their native language. Uh, you know, English. You know, unless you're talking about the deep south or uh, uh, you know some more rural areas in Newfoundland, it's like you know the accent's a little different, but uh, uh, you know the English is common, right? So you're competing in the same um, in in the same in the same language, competing in the same sort of format, and also you know you don't have a huge budget in Canada often like a deepest film is a is a very quite a substantially a substantial budget but it's it's rare that you get that big that epic a work in, in Canada I mean you know there's other filmmakers who, who work with those similar budgets but that's a that's a huge movie um, but it wouldn't be a huge movie comparatively like to say Hollywood product um, but uh, I think that any culture that doesn't sort of isn't interested in seeing itself on screen in terms of uh, you know defining itself, uh, exploring what its you know um, uh, you know what its limitations are, like seeing itself, recognizing itself is is in a sort of very problematic place. It leaves you 
uh, you know, a, a lack of, I, I mean, in some cases, in some ways, I suppose, Canadian identity is kind of a lack of identity in that way, or like not as aggressively defined as, say, our neighbors to the south, where it's kind of, you know, it's, it's you know, there's that whole frontier thing and whatever. But the, uh, um, I wouldn't say that, uh, I, I just think it's like absolutely key to have, have your own stories told. Otherwise, it's like there's, there's not much identification with the, uh, um, uh, you know, there's not much identification with the country. There's, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's just basically an ep economic union, and that's deeply problematic. The top ten is a really great way to get the dialogue going on Canadian film. Is there anything else that we could be doing to promote it? Um, yeah, I think um, any any awareness uh, any awareness of uh, particularly English Canadian film I think is key. I mean, the good thing about Top Ten is that we travel it to a, a number of locations across the country, and sometimes it's the only chance for people to see some of those films because uh, they're not released. Uh, often English Canadian films don't get uh, substantial releases in Quebec if at all, so that's kind of cool. Um, but I do think it's awareness is a problem. I mean, often Canadians, uh, Piers Handling, our, our CEO, has, a, has one of, the, I think, the most intelligent and trenchant lines about Canadian cinema uh, in, a, in a piece he wrote uh, a while back where he said that talking to Canadians about their own cinema is like talking to an amnesiac. You, they don't really <laughs> remember and they can't really, they can't always identify uh, what the films are. And I remember having a conversation with someone, uh, you know, I asked them what can last, was, was the last Canadian film they saw and they, they, they sort of hemmed and hawed, and they finally had, well, was, can I mention something on TV? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And then, and then I said, well, what was the last film you saw in the theater that you liked? And, and they said, oh, I really liked It's All Gone Pete Tong, uh, which is, of course, Mike Douse's movie, which was on the top ten uh, a couple years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, we, we often don't... I, I mean, it's not an overtly Canadian film. It doesn't take place in Canada. It's set in Ibiza. The characters are primarily British. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily identify, unless you knew who Mike Douse was, and at that point he was a pretty substantial filmmaker. He'd made Fubar, which was a sort of surprise hit, uh, got him a lot of attention. Um, you know, this film won a prize at TIFF as well, so, you know, it's, it's sort of strange. Sometimes we don't always, um, breaking through that, I'm not sure how we do that other than, you know, keep repeating over and over again. And I mean, we, our cinema is like really, I think, both in English Canada and Quebec, I think it is one of the most, uh, uh, fertile and and I think in, in a lot of ways one of the strongest cinemas um, uh, you know when you look at stuff like when, when you look at the fact that we often have two directors in competition it can very few countries can claim that we, you know often Goyen and Cronenberg have been both both in competition in Cannes in the same year and that's rare um, you know there's it, Canadian films win prizes around the world uh, uh, you know, recently uh, Hollywood has been, uh, you know, um, hiring Canadian directors to do projects of their own, right? Projects they want to do. So um, it's it's a pretty cool thing. It's an it's an interesting period right now. And where's the best place for us to find out more information on you and your work with Canadian film and the Vault and Cinemate Cinematech and the Top Ten online? Uh, well, I, uh, that would be the TIFF website um, or uh, the Canadian Film Encyclopedia actually uh, which you can get uh, you get you go to the tip website and you can sort of work your way through it it's actually uh, um, there's a number of other contributors but it's it's a uh, it's a key sort of online resource about Canadian cinema and I did a fair amount of writing on that so and as an expert on Canadian cinema what is your favorite all-time Canadian film uh, well it's really hard to pick a favorite uh, but I will say that I think the one that um, really had an impact on me was produced uh, by our founders, actually the founders of the festival, uh, Bill Marshall, Hank Vanderkoek, and uh, Dusty Cole. It was a film called Outrageous. It was actually done by an American director. Uh, it starred uh, uh, Craig Russell and Hollis McLaren, and it was about a... Uh, um, it was about a, uh, the Hollis, it was based on uh, Margaret Gibson's uh, short stories, uh, it's a collection called The Butterfly Award. And Hollis McLaren plays a schizophrenic writer uh, whose only friend is uh, Craig Russell, who's a gay hairdresser and is, 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 uh, does a female impersonation on the weekends at a, at a club. And he, you know, it's about their relationship and, uh, um, you know, it's a great performance, by, great performances by Russell and McLaren. And it just seemed to me like, 
you know, when you gr when you grew up in the '70s, like I did, t Toronto and Canada was not certainly the hippest place you'd ever you'd ever seen. It wasn't like so keen on difference or anything like that. I mean, it was a very like uh, waspy city, which changed significantly in the in the mid to late '70s. But the, I mean, in some ways, the whole area. I mean, things have changed uh, significantly, especially demographically and in terms of uh, you know a much more diverse uh, demographic than back then. Uh, but to me, I mean, the great thing about Regis is it made it made Toronto seem like kind of a livable city. Uh, like you know, it was kind of hip in its own way. It wasn't like it wasn't New York City, but it was like it was it was it seemed like a, a, a cool spot. And it was the first time I'd ever seen Toronto look kind of cool. So we'll I'll have to check out Outrageous then. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much. Congratulations on all of your work with Canadian film and here at the festival. And I look forward to coming out and seeing the top ten. Cool. Thanks. I'm Katie Allman reporting for Katie Chats here at the TIFF Bell Lightbox in downtown Toronto.